First of all, TJ, thanks for joining us. Um, you're just coming off of the bye week. Tell me, uh, what did you do during the bye week? You know, it's always a, a good time to get away for a second and just kind of clear your mind uh, of everything going on. So really, it was just kind of laying low and relaxing a little bit, you know, watching the tape and, you know, trying to stay mentally in the game. So then we come back this week and you really feel it, you know, guys are firing on all cylinders and things like that. But it's, you know, it's a great time to get away for a second. So what do you, when you look at this having a break in the middle of the season, what do you think is the biggest benefit for the entire team? I think everyone um, kind of gets to take a step back and, um, you know, evaluate themselves in terms of, you know, looking back at the past games and seeing uh, what they could do better and how moving forward, how we can improve just in, in any way possible. I think it's, it's a big time personally for guys to, you know, get their bodies back and also, you know, make sure that, you know, mentally we can kind of get a little edge going into the next week. Gotcha. You came into the league undrafted. That never should have happened, but uh, <laughs> you were mainly a special teams guy last year. You led the team in special teams tackles. Tell me about this extended role you have now as a starter. You know, last year, uh, kind of like you said, it was mostly special teams, um, but I was able to, you know, learn a lot from the guys that were in front of me in terms of Nigel and Camus and Snake and those guys just to see how they play the game and see their routines of how they, you know, go into each week as a starter. So I was able to take a lot of things from that and apply it to my own kind of routine. And I think, you know, just going off of last year and getting those mental reps of when I wasn't in and correlating it to this year when I'm actually out there and doing it, I think that helped me a lot. So I think learning from those veterans that were here last year uh, really helped me a lot this year in terms of, you know, playing more defense. Now. You had your best game last week. Um, you led the team in tackles. You had a forced fumble. You had a sack. Uh, what clicked for you in that Dallas Cowboys game? I felt just really comfortable out there. You know, I felt as a team defensive wise, we were just playing really firm in the run. And, you know, those big D linemen up front were, you know, taking on most of those blocks. I was able to get downhill quick and, you know, playing in the middle, you know, most of the time those runs are coming up the gap. So I was able to make some plays and uh, I think really we just were doing a good job of being, you know, assignment sound and, and making sure that everyone's doing their job. And I think that's where, uh, you know, you find success. And I think that's something we got to continue to do. How do you enjoy a compliment like a Jim Swartz saying that TJ is our best guy in terms of getting downhill, uh, taking on those blocks of guards and getting to the football? How do you handle those type of compliments? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's definitely something, you know, good to hear. Um, but you know that the work never stops and that, you know, maybe something that, you know, I'm better at. But I also have to find the, the stuff in my game that I'm not good at right now and make sure that I'm doing that well so I can be a better all-around linebacker. You know, I've always prided myself on being physical and being able to get downhill and things like that. But, uh, you know, as you know, this game is changing and evolving. So I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, able to stay on the field and, and do whatever I can to, you know, help this defense play better. You speak of changing and evolving. I look at the New York Giants football team and offensively, they're doing some different things. A little more downhill running versus the perimeter running and the running game by committee, no Saquon Barkley. What is the big challenge for you guys versus that run game of the New York Giants? Yeah, like you said, it's a lot of downhill schemes and a bunch of different running backs who are all versatile in their own way. And then I think their quarterback, Daniel Jones, has done a good job with his own read and making that really a weapon for them. So, you know, it's one of those things that we have to go into this game and make sure that we contain that as much as possible to make sure that we keep them off track and get them in the, those backed up situations that we want to get them in. Give me a little scouting report on those three guys. I think uh, Gallman and Morris are more of their downhill guys. And then you got Deion Lewis, who can really do it all in the past game. So I think, you know, all around, they're very balanced and very talented. And then, like we said before, just adding uh, Daniel Jones as another runner into that component really makes them, you know, dangerous. So it's just one of those things where, again, we have to be uh, on our assignments the entire game. Well, I can tell you this, Philadelphia likes to see points scored, but they love a solid stud in the middle of their defense. And uh, best of luck to you up there against the Giants. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it.